My first poem is called When We Tell. So I know English was brought by white people to our country. But when we speak it, when we slur that language like sinews of vine floss extracting our teeth, grind it with coral and iron wood in our mouths, when we tell of the gritty taste, we've got to have a tongue and way of doing it. I think so, right? <laughs> and then, um, I, um, yeah, so like, I think sometimes, you, no, you know, Kimmy, you know, I don't want to talk too much. Like you said, you know, okay, because I am a real talker, so I'm just going to not talk too much. <laughs> if you haven't uh, noticed, I'm kind of a talker, huh? Like, wow, that one is real chatty. <laughs> so this poem is called Atu. It's actually a, it's a small island in um, the archipelago of the Cook Islands in eastern Polynesia. It's by Tahiti. This is a place that I lived, and I just returned from it. I, I lived there for actually many years. Atu. <clears throat> Driving back from Marae Orongo, uh, that's a sacred site, I turn left to go to the harbor. I must see that large, magnificent sea and talk with the speckled chickens gossiping among the brittle toa tree leaves. This is my birthright to call on my ancestors for comfort. I'll pick this red hibiscus. The edges of my eyes stack wrinkles. The jagged shine can't lie about the lives I've lived. My hair is spotted gray like the chickens. This you wrap can't reach the other side of my mushy belly. Antibiotics can't help these mosquito bites still oozing with pus. I'll wear this bright, beautiful red hibiscus in my hair, lay with coconut and toa trees. We'll watch the waves lap in and out to ease the shattering of our hearts. Thank you, and um, I'm going to keep my reading really short today, because I don't know. I'm not going to. I'm not going to explain. <laughs> no. So, um, and then this poem is called uh, "Tui Tui." Um, I, uh, okay, hurry up, Laura. Um, have any of you seen those candle nut um, leis that people wear? They're like black nuts, right? So they're, they're called kui kui in, in Hawaiian. And I think most people get it from Hawaii probably or, or something like that. And so, but they're in, you know, they're around the Pacific and, and they're in Tongan it's called tui tui. And um, they're used to, um, they're like an astringent and also a moisturizer. And so they're used to bathe babies. And then also they're used for ceremonies for um, um, the dead, you know, when people pass away in their bodies. So this is called Dui Dui. Touching, holding the trunk of our coconut, patting the tufts of moss climbing its back, feeling the light breathing of coldness in May. Our gods talking, we're startled by fleeting birds. What does it mean when the May, that's a breadfruit, sheds its rusty leaves quicker than the moko regrows, the lizard, the gecko? What does it mean, excuse me, watch me. What does it mean when the daughter who loves you is silenced by the sting of your palm on her face? For the siale, that's the uh, um, gardenia, to open in abundance, you must witness words steaming from lungs of restless boys, standing under light post shadows of bold girls who laugh like overboiling the teapot. The frothy white blossoms brown as the Kalonika Kala climbs its trellis and rests on pua trees. That's uh, like the frangipani, you know, the, the one that a lot of people know that one, the plumeria, and walkways. Out of this, something is being said. Have you sat on the calf of the old ovava, that's a banyan tree, just above the knotted ankle, hung on to its brooding beard? You know, a god dropped a dui dui. You picked it up, you cracked it, chewed it with mohokoi into a lather, your knowledge of home. I'm talking to the child in our bellies almost right. No, Tukulang Mea, it's not for you to be confused with who, who is the God? What God? Is there a God? What, where is that God then? See, the same Tui Tui stands, the one we gathered lather from when my mother was young. Rub your bodies, 
scents of petals, bark, hard nut, heavy rain, breezes of salt, milk, earth. It is a fananga, a riddle, a way of life. It is a god. Our knowledge, our resistance, the leather of tui tui still supple on our skin. Malo, malo. Malo, kainga. Yes, just uh, thank you. Thank you, um, relatives. And then this poem to the young Tongan poets. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's good. it explains itself. To the young Tongan poets. Yeah, so much love to the young Tongan poets, you know, because I'm like an older Tongan poet now. And so, yeah, like Kim said, you know, you've, you've got to, we have to know our ancestry. And part of being an older Tongan poet, I have to know when I was young. I have so much love for them. And Kai, I have so much love for you and for the beauty you brought. And I saw how that's so connected to your mom, Kimmy, and the beauty you brought us. So I'm just so humbled to be here in this space. So to the young Tongan poets, if you write one love poem, you must write another to sustain it. Then you must build on that one and then get up and do it again. Sometimes there's a crescendo, the rush of milky waves on volcanic rocks, slowly retrieving like the lull of the sun resting. A matter of moments before you begin again. It's never easy. It's never easy. You know, sometimes you turn up siempre hace frío and you weep. ¿A dónde estás? ¿A dónde estás? And the young Colombian waiting along with you for a washer doesn't turn away. He looks back knowingly, and you must pretend to check on your clothes because his generous gesture humbles you, and you begin to cry, standing with neighbors in a laundromat in your soiled concrete square of a poor neighborhood. Long hours for low wages is the unkempt whisper that roams the streets. Every poem, we know this tongue in poets, Every poem we lay down is a dream, making peace with the forces that ripped away everything they could reach. A poem is meticulously dressed in kie and ngatu, that's our tapa cloth. A wedding day, the merger of the past and the future in the present, is the 21st birthday celebration of a young Tongan poet bringing down the house to the awe, whistles, applause, beer run toasts of distant relatives and homies at an empty squatted home, at an empty squatted house in Rose Park, Salt Lake City. In February at 4 a.m. in the morning, where homeless men fish the Jordan River, sighing at the direction of island guitars and Zapp and Roger, taking them back to their first night in the soft arms of a hotel in Saigon. A poem is a night of gava where Billie Holiday, wearing a siale se, is lead singer, and Melissa Etheridge, comfortably in her jeans, follows on lead guitar. A poem is the fragrance of the wiki heilala night. You wanted to stay up until dawn, walk hand in hand to Wafuvuna, and feel the strength held in the neck of the boy seated in front of you at the Sivihiva, but you follow your friends home to sleep for school the next morning. A poem makes us consider, because I'm Tongan, we, we, have, a, we have a monarchy. <laughs> a poem makes us consider when our grandmother talks about the Tongan prince, we think of Malcolm and Tupac who showed us clearly what a to'a must choose to do in a time of crisis. And when our uncles are busy preparing for the Tongan King's visit to the Bay Area, we think of Martin, who we hold close in our hearts and connect him to women and men who ushered him down the aisle to the forefront of a movement that has made it easier for us in this country. A poem is knowing there's only $5 left in your welfare account, but you find $20 and you split your good fortune with Maverick Square Maddie over a cup of coffee at the Sumner Street Dun Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> you know, putting your daughter or your son to sleep. You open the windows, inviting in a mixture of street light and reggaeton. You sit down and weep another night of writing. Every poem, we know this, Tongan poets, we know this, San Francisco poets. Every, every poem 
is a love poem. Thank you. <laughs>